What is this egg? Seriously, what kind of ridiculous monstrosity were Raja and his crew shipping around on their boat, taking up half of its space? Here is what I believe to be the true secret behind this gigantic egg and what it may teach us about the final war of One Piece and why this little girl we met on Skypiea, as we now know probably the single most important arc before the time skip, might be the Sky counterpart to Momonosuke on land in Wano and Shira Hoshi under the ocean on Fishman Islands. There has been a ton of speculation around this throughout the years, but here are the two main theories that have emerged over time and that you might be familiar with. So let me get you up to date. The main generally accepted theory is that the egg on Roger's ship is the ancient weapon Uranus. <laughs> Uranus. This is because the first time we get to see this mysterious giant thing on board of the Oro Jackson, which is the name of Roger's ship, is when he encircled by Shiki's armada of powerful warships. Shiki is a former member of the notorious Rocks pirate group that was the main antagonist of the One Piece movie Strong Worlds. And even though that wasn't canon, Shiki as a character very much is. And so this battle between Shiki and Roger takes place in the special chapter zero of One Piece that was released together with the movie and unlike the film itself, is very much canon. In other words, a legit part of the story. And so in this legendary encounter where Roger's situation seems pretty much hopeless, Shiki reveals that he has come for an apocalyptical weapon that Roger has allegedly found somewhere during his journey two years before reaching Laugh Tale. The only strange thing we can see on the ship, however, is the giant egg. And like a miracle, a sudden change of weather brings a storm that helps the Roger pirates escape this helpless looking situation. Situation. And so this of course suggests two things. The storm is connected to the weapon that Roger has and the weapon is connected to the only weird thing, the egg. And as you all know, an apocalyptical weapon in One Piece must surely be connected to the so-called ancient weapons that were created during the Void Century. Or really simply, egg equals apocalyptical weapon equals ancient weapon. And since we already know about the ancient weapon Poseidon, which is the mermaid princess Shirahoshi on Fishman Island, and Pluton seems to be strongly connected to Momonosuke and Wano, we must conclude that this egg contains some sort of living creature that is the actual ancient weapon Uranus. <laughs> Though, as you all see, I don't quite agree with that conclusion to 100%. I think it's actually even better than just that. Okay, so the egg is connected to Uranus. <laughs> But what actually is inside it? <laughs> okay. What actually is inside it? Again, people have tried to narrow it down a lot. Since Poseidon is underwater and the warship Pluton on the water, Uranus, which is named after the Greek god of the heavens, surely must be connected to the sky. Or to put it simply, inside the egg is probably some sort of creature that can fly in the sky. One idea here is of course that this could be the egg of a dragon, but not just any dragon, the last remaining dragon in the One Piece world. Remember, the world of One Piece used to have wild real dragons in it hundreds of years ago that the government wants to revive so badly they put Dr. Vegapunk, their absolute mega ultra super genius on it, who honestly did a pretty decent job, I would say, when we see the one dragon we have on Punk Hazard. The celestial dragons, as their name suggests, also seem to have some strange connection to this mythical being, making the who of the dragon their actual symbol. There is of course Luffy's mysterious father, Monkey D Dragon, the leader of the Revolutionary Army, and with Kaido and Momonosuke, we have not one but two mythical devil fruit users with real dragon powers that are not only incredibly powerful, but also hold a special meaning. As we now know, Big Mom found this fruit for Kaido on God Valley that used to belong to the Celestial Dragons. In other words, if this egg held not just a devil fruit version, but an actual real dragon from the past, that would truly count as an ancient weapon in my books at least, with the abilities to change the weather and create destruction, just like 
Kaido has been kindly enough showing to us all throughout Wano so far. A really interesting feathered alternative to this that I've seen discussed here and there as well recently is that this egg might be some sort of mythical bird. The rock comes to mind, for instance, a gigantuous and legendary bird from Middle Eastern mythology that also made its debut recently in the story in chapter 1000 as Luffy shows off his new big attack. As I've been told, there are also a number of legendary birds in Filipino mythology, like the Manaul or the concept of the cosmic bird crater. By the way, salamat po to all Filipinos who are watching right now. And then of course, there is the powerful giant hawk from Nordic mythology that sits on top of the world tree Yggdrasil. And yes, of course, we will also talk about Elbaf and Shanks in this video in just a second as well. Before we move on though, a quick shout out to Elisa Rosales Solis and Rocky Alonso, both of whom are subscribed to the channel and thus have helped me increase my bounty by 100 berries each, pushing me forward on our quest to overtake Treble's bounty and reach 100 million berries. Okay, so these are basically the most common ideas so far about the giant egg that are floating around on the internet that at least I'm aware of. And they will be important to what I'm about to tell you next, but I want to take things a little bit further even, or actually a lot further. Because I think that there is even more we can conclude about the egg and the ancient weapon Uranus than just this. And it's all thanks to the incredible Reddit user Akaore, who posted a really unique and awesome discussion about this on my subreddit Wild Anime Theories that basically is just wild One Piece theories at this point, so make sure to check it out if you're interested. The core idea here that I found incredibly intriguing honestly is that the ancient Ancient weapons aren't just one thing, like just Chirahoshi by herself is not Poseidon. Momo by himself is not Pluton. Instead, he proposes the CCC theory. Ancient weapons consist of three parts, three Cs. A conductor that controls the weapon and functions as a sort of key a carriage that basically is the body of the actual weapon itself, and the cavalry, powerful beings that can carry and pull the vehicle and the weapon and move it around. Now, this idea is especially based on what we've seen about Poseidon on Fishman Island. Shirahoshi is Poseidon because she's able to command the Sea Kings, the giant sea monsters that rule over the seas of the One Piece world. Shirahoshi seemingly has inherited this power through the royal bloodline from the last mermaid princess that lived 800 years ago, the one that Joy Boy made his promise to. In other words, the key to unlocking the true power of the ancient weapon Uranus seems to be genetically encoded into the royal family of Fishman Islands. The Fishman being a race that was part of, or at least had really close connections to the ancient kingdom. By the way, this is pretty incredible. Like this hints at how technologically advanced that civilization actually was and how hard it fought for a free world in the future. And so the third piece of the puzzle here is the enormous ship Noah that we saw parked in front of the islands. A boat of absolutely infathomable size that dates back to the void century and under no circumstances can be destroyed until it can finally fulfill its purpose. I think I probably wasn't the only one that got reminded of Pluton when they first saw this thing. And so I would argue that the Noah is actually part of the ancient weapon Poseidon. You have the conductor, Shirahoshi, who controls the intelligent sea kings who can pull this gigantic boat Something we actually saw them do, by the way. Like, they actively made sure the Noah is safe. This seems to suggest that all three together form the ancient weapon itself. Now, let's take it even a step further. You have probably heard about the idea that at the end of One Piece, the Red Line and the Grand Line will be destroyed to form the legendary sea, the All Blue. Well, wouldn't Pluton be the perfect tool to get the Fishman and Fishman Island to the surface, since their country that is located directly under the Red Line would otherwise be crushed and buried. And of course, there most likely would be some other military use for the weapon as well, obviously. So, Shirahoshi and Fishman Island have given us the basic idea for how the ancient weapons might operate as three parts put together. Let's apply this to the ancient weapon we know the second most about, probably. 
Pluton. As we now know, Pluton is located in Wano. We also have long suspected that Momonosuke is an ancient weapon as well, who is able to control the gigantuous intelligent elephant Zunisha, who once again dates back to the Void Century and has a good relationship with Joy Boy in some sense. We also know that Pluton has actual physical building plans. These are the ones that Tom and Iceberg passed on to Frankie and that Frankie then burned in front of Spandam's face. They were the entire reason for ZP9 being stationed in Water 7 for all these years in the first place. So there is an actual physical ship or object that can be built that is part of Pluton. So once again, the three C's match perfectly. We have Momonosuke, the conductor, a key that can be genetically passed down from the Void Century through the bloodline, in this case, of the Kozuki family, that just like the Fishmen were allied with or part of the Ancient Kingdom and Joy Boy. Another genetic key which, like, let's be real here, engineering the ancient weapons to activate at a specific time, only being usable for specific trusted people, is pretty ingenious by the Ancient Kingdom, you gotta be honest. You have Sunisha, who just like the Sea Kings, can be controlled by Momo, the cavalry who can pull a physical warship, the carriage for which Frankie had the plans and that seems to be hidden away in or most likely under Wano itself. I mean, this would also explain why Momonosuke said that he can't die under any circumstances after reading about himself in Odin's journal and why he wants to keep Wano's borders closed for now. That's because he has to wait for the right moment that he, Shirahoshi and the third person that I'll get to in just a second will meet and help Luffy slash Joy Boy to save the world. After all, both Momonosuke and Shirahoshi were inspired by Luffy, became his friends, and wanted to become as strong as he is. Which finally brings us all the way back to Uranus and the giant egg on Roger's ship. The gigantuous living thing inside of it would basically be the sky counterpart to the Sea Kings underwater and Zunisha on sea level. In other words, the cavalry able to carry the actual ship part of Uranus. <laughs> but what about the conductor and the carriage? Well, since it's the sky version of the three ancient weapons, I think a lot hints towards the sky itself, where, as we know, sky islands do actually exist. The reason I really like the idea of the Nordic mythology bird that sits on top of the world tree Yggdrasil inside the egg is that our next goal in the story is most likely Elbaf. Elbaf not only has a giant tree inspired for sure by the tree Yggdrasil itself, but it also seems to be protected by Shanks who is full of Nordic themes himself. And so, since Shanks was actually part of Roger's crew, he might protect Elba for exactly that purpose. Now, I do think that the giants of Elba were also allied with the Ancient Kingdom and Joy Boy, and there is a real chance that the conductor counterpart to Shirahoshi and Momonosuke is someone from the royal family of Elba. However, there is a lot more evidence that point at another ancient race here, the Shandorans of Skypea. The proud people people who lived in the golden city with its golden bell and the poneglyph that talked about Poseidon on Fishman Island. Skypea that, as you know from the big Uteron theory I did, might well have been the actual location of the ancient kingdom itself. But then what does Elbaf have to do with the Sky Islands, right? Well, as you might remember, the Straw Hats took the unofficial route to the Sky Islands using the knock up stream. However, there is also an official way to reach Skypea, and I'm neither the first nor the only person who strongly believes that the giant tree on Elbaf might actually be just that entrance that might have the giant bird from Roger's Egg sitting and waiting on top, which would then leave us with the two questions, who is the conductor and what is the ship? Well, what if I told you we have seen both already? Don't you also find that Enel's arc Maxime is a bit of a curiosity in the entire story. Enel is not exactly portrayed as the brightest lamp in the socket, and so it's really curious that he managed to come up with the concept of the Arc Maxime. Only that we know that Enel did not build this ship himself, but forced God's men, the people of Skypea, sworn to the person who holds the title of God, to build the ship for him. And so isn't it much more likely that instead of Enel being a secret engineering genius, 
he found the plans for the Ark Maxime in God's room, similar to how there are plans to the Pluton. Remember, this is a ship that is capable of traveling goddamn space. Especially with Luffy slash Joy Boy being Sun God Nika, who by the way was first foreshadowed exactly here on Skypiea, wouldn't it make sense that the title of God originally belonged to the Sun God slash Joy Boy, the original creator of the three ancient weapons. In other words, isn't it much more likely that the Ark Maxime is the ship part of the ancient weapon Uranus, whose plans get passed down among the Sky People for many generations? Which then only leaves us with the person to control the giant bird to carry the Ark and complete the ancient weapon. And that very person is most likely this little girl here, Isa. In case you forgot, this girl allegedly was born with incredible incredibly overpowered observation hockey, being able to hear the entire Skypiea archipelago. But does this really make sense? A kid who is born with overpowered hockey? Doesn't this remind you much more of Momonosuke hearing Zunisha's voice for the very first time? Isn't it much more reasonable to assume that this little girl has the voice of all things? Like Luffy, like Momo, and like Shirahoshi? And just like Momo and the Mermaid Princess, Aisa was saved and inspired by Luffy. It's an arc and relationship with Luffy that's exclusive to these three kids. Only to them. And while we don't know who Aisa's parents were, we do know in fact that the Shandorans have a royal bloodline, just like the Kozuki or the royal family of the Fishmen, that could carry that necessary key gene necessary for awakening the Conductor. Which in the end would give us people from the sea, from the land and from the sky, a creature from the sea, the land and the sky, as well as a ship for each of the three. And since we're most likely going to Albaf and the top of Yggdrasil next, it would be very easy for Oda to bring Aisa back into the story that way. And so if you want to know what else might happen on the Island of the Giants and what has been foreshadowed, you really shouldn't miss out on this video about Albaf right here next.